What's something your parents would do that is totally inexcusable? Would you have the guts to go no contact after such an act? Today on Our Lounge, we meet an OP who must protect his family at all costs. Entitled Step Monster got herself banned from my wedding. I tried posting this on Am I the A-Hole through a different account a couple of days ago, but it didn't work out. Given the trigger warning, I'm not surprised. I have since concluded my wife and I did the right thing, so this will be my last attempt to post this story. I tried to add some info and change the wording a little. All names are fake. My, 28 male, stepmother, 49 female, is a wannabe party planner. She has taken it upon herself to plan and host every party and holiday my dad's family has thrown since she married him. I never loved those occasions growing up. She's controlling and gets upset if people complain about anything, but humored her for my dad's sake. According to him, this helps her feel included. I'm getting married to my fiance, Jane, 26 female, in July. We got engaged in early 2021, but Jane ended up getting pregnant a couple months after that, and we decided to postpone the wedding to focus on our son for a while. So we've had a long engagement. My stepmother has tried to hijack our wedding plans from day one, complaining, contacting our planner, showing up unannounced to Jane's dress appointments, etc. And we have repeatedly asked her to stop. Dad wants us to humor her, but she's clearly resentful of the fact that she's not hosting the wedding and being labeled mother of the groom in invitations. Besides our baby boy, we also have Luke, four male, Jane's paternal half-brother. She got custody of him a few months into our relationship after his parents died. I ended up moving in with them during the pandemic and have been in Luke's life since he was a baby. He doesn't call me dad and refers to us as his sister and his OP, but we love him like a son. Stepmother though, hates Luke. She accuses Jane of baby trapping her way into the family. That accusation only got worse after our son was born. My dad gets along with Jane and adores the kids, but stepmother demands him to refuse babysitting Luke so we don't leave the kids with them often. Instead, Jane's brother and sister-in-law usually watch the kids for us as their children are close to ours in age. We had a thing last Sunday and my brother-in-law was out of town with his family. Jane's other siblings live in different cities as well as my mom and sister. My dad agreed to babysit at our place and we left. We came back to find both kids crying, stepmother screaming and dad weakly trying to calm everyone down. Apparently, Luke had told stepmother that both he and our son were going to be our ring bearers and she went ballistic. She screamed that she wasn't going to allow that because he wasn't family. She then made me need to include the trigger warning when he started crying. His lip is still split. She'd never gotten to this point before. We immediately banned her from our house and from our wedding. Dad is fuming and has said he's not going without her. He's also convinced half of his side of the family by severely downplaying what stepmother did to boycott the wedding as well. This includes my stepbrother, who fully agrees with his mother no matter how many times I try to tell him the truth. Me and Jane are refusing to budge, but many of my cousins who aren't coming anymore are asking us to reconsider. Pretty much all of Jane's family agrees with us, but one of her aunts has suggested that maybe stepmother is acting out because she doesn't feel welcomed by my family. I've honestly had it with my family enabling her behavior. I love my dad and really want him at my wedding, but I am more than willing to go no contact if it means protecting my family. Edit. I think I accidentally deleted the paragraph where I mentioned this, but we did press charges. We took Luke to the pediatrician the next day and gathered every piece of evidence we had. Not only did we have pictures of Luke's face, but by some miraculous strike of luck, we also had nanny cam footage. Some commenters were right to assume that my stepmother hadn't been invited to our house, but my dad hasn't really gone anywhere without her in years, so we took precautions. We didn't expect her to actually do anything this awful, but we've never trusted her with us kids. The physical attack happened off camera, but there is some footage of her screaming and Luke crying before and after the event. She now has a child abuse charge on her rap sheet. We wouldn't let her get away with this. Edit 2. There is a lot of additional info I want to add. I'll try to respond to at least some of the comments. I did not expect the amount I've gotten so far. But all I'll add for now is that Luke is okay. The visit to the pediatrician happened the day after. He already had a counselor. Jane was pretty traumatized when her dad and stepmom died and was worried it would rub off on him and will continue treatment. We've been hugging and pampering him a little more than usual too. He's still upset, but is already doing much better. I'm sorry this happened, OP. I think you and Jane are totally in your right to uninvite her from the wedding. What she did was abuse. And if people want to stick by her for abusing a child, then they don't have to come to the wedding either. 
Who wants people like that around? It seems Luke has had a rough go at life already, and the last thing he needs is a toxic environment. Update five days later. I want to thank everybody who took the time to read and or comment on my previous post. It's been a tough week, but it's always great to know that people care. I haven't been able to reply to every comment, but I will try to address some in this update. This might get a little long, I'll start off by saying that me and Jane are going no contact with my dad and stepmother. We haven't really spoken to either of them since the incident, and I don't plan on being the one to reach out. Any communication between us is being handled by my younger sister. She's completely on our side, but will remain in low contact for the time being. I've decided to adopt Jane's way of dealing with people she cares about. Forgive what's apologized for, but never forget. Basically, if dad or stepmother ever truly understand what they did wrong and sincerely apologize, we're willing to forgive them, even if begrudgingly so, but we will never ignore or let them forget what they did to our family. And for the time being, neither of them will be allowed near Luke, our baby, and any other kids we may have in the future, even if we do forgive them. As for the rest of the family, I read a lot of comments suggesting that I post pictures of Luke's face, as well as the nanny cam footage. I'm not very active on social media, but even if I was, I'm not comfortable exposing my injured preschooler like that especially given that nothing on the internet ever truly goes away. I also decided not to share the pictures with my family unless truly necessary. I should probably mention that while my family adores my dad, most of them aren't very fond of stepmother. She had two failed marriages prior to meeting my father, the first of which resulted in my stepbrother, and he cheated on his then girlfriend to be with her. My family loved that girlfriend and disliked stepmother right away. Not only has she been controlling and manipulative since the beginning, she's also tried to force her way into the family matriarch role by any means possible. Taking over planning duties for every family event was her favorite way to do it because of all the attention and compliments that come with it. The main reason why I hated these parties growing up was because she'd always find a way to make everything about her, including Christmas and mine and my sister's birthdays. The rest of the family felt neutral about it, but they never liked her. With Luke, it was different. Most of the relatives didn't meet him until COVID restrictions got looser, and by then, he was two years old. He was a bright and genuinely lovable kid, and there weren't really any other small children in the family, so everyone immediately started cooing over him. The way I see it, stepmom got upset that Jane and Luke were accepted by my family so easily compared to her experience, and that's why she resents them both, but I can't confirm that. She was also mad that, aside from not being the planner, she would have absolutely no involvement in the wedding party. She tried to pressure us into letting her officiate. One of Jane's best friends was offered that role a year ago, making stepbrother my best man. He wasn't interested and had already gotten my best friend or asking her sister's daughter to be our flower girl. We would promised Jane's three-year-old niece. Also, her sister's daughter is 15 and doesn't know us. She also tried to convince us to let my dad walk Jane down the aisle since her father's gone, but her eldest brother, the brother-in-law I mentioned in the first post, had already been enlisted. Stepmom was disappointed that my family wasn't as involved in the wedding as Jane's and kept making comments about how that would never happen if we put her in charge. All of that being said, there is nothing that can excuse being that awful to a child, especially if it really is the petty jealousy that I suspect. Because I haven't spoken to my father, my sister has been keeping me updated on what he's been up to. As I found out through her, the story my dad and stepmother told the rest of the family completely erases Luke's injury and the abuse charges. It insinuates that me and Jane banned them because we got annoyed with stepmother and decided to take it out on my dad as well. Because most people already disliked stepmom, explaining what actually happened that night wasn't hard, and most of the relatives that I actually wanted at the wedding have apologized and are berating my dad as well. The people that didn't believe us, as well as those saying we overreacted, have been told they are not welcome in our home anymore. Those are mostly people from my dad's generation, so I can't say I'm surprised but the realization that they are so biased they're willing to protect a woman they hate after she hurt a child just to make my dad happy has reassured me that I don't need any of them in my life. Stepbrother is also in denial. He refuses to believe his mother could hurt a child, even with all the evidence we have. I have to admit I understand. I love my mom too, but that doesn't mean I'd excuse his obliviousness. So he's banned too. It sucks because we were close growing up, but I don't regret it. Besides, Jane has three other siblings besides Luke, the older brother-in-law, a twin brother, and a younger sister. And I'm closer to them than I ever was to him. Speaking of Jane's family, they're all furious over what happened and have been extremely supportive of us. Jane's maternal family basically adopted Luke after she got custody of him and have called frequently to make sure he's okay. 
we did manage to save some money with everybody we uninvited and have decided to use it to help Jane's cousin. She lives in a different country and was previously unable to come to the wedding, so we're paying for her plane ticket. Luke has gotten much better and is almost completely back to being the sunny child he's always been. The split lip was shallow. It's healing slowly, but didn't require any stitches. We sat him down a few days ago and explained that my dad and stepmonster wouldn't be around anymore. He really liked my dad, but understands that he and the stepmom are attached to the hip. He's clearly scared of her, but we're doing our best to make him feel safe. Me and Jane have reassured him that he is family. We love him, and no one will ever change that. I'm not too worried about dad or stepmother trying to show up at the wedding, but we've alerted the venue and given them pictures just in case they try anything. Better safe than sorry. Some people brought attention to the fact that stepmother is a hypocrite for saying Luke isn't family. I agree, for obvious reasons. Her main excuse for pretty much everything she does is that she doesn't feel like my family welcomes her. Dad has been guilting me to take part in everything she plans by reminding us that for as long as I can remember, the way he continues to make excuses for her without realizing that is basically a case of the pot calling the kettle black, except Luke actually is family, is what has made me accept that. While I will always love my dad, it's not healthy or safe for me and my family to be around him anymore. It hurts to know that my son won't have his only remaining bio grandfather in his life, but he has two amazing step grandpas to make up for it. For now, I'm sad, but satisfied with how things have turned out. I don't like to complain about my life. It's a mess, but a beautiful one. I love my fiance, I love my kids, and I'm lucky enough to love my job. We're happy. I'm not letting anyone ruin that. To whoever was annoyed at my censorship, when posting on I Am I the A-Hole didn't work out, Jane suggested I make the writing less explicit. I'm not used to Reddit yet, so I might have overdone it a little bit. I hope this is my last update on the story, but I'll keep you posted. Again, thank you all for your love and support. Best wishes to all of you. Here's some other information in the comments. The only reason why I, that this is the first time she's hit him is because this was the first and last time she was with the kids unsupervised. Me and Jane were around every previous time she saw Luke. She didn't want my dad to babysit him, and we'd only asked him to on a few occasions before. My sister was still living with them at the time, and has assured me that Luke was never out of her sight. I know and trust my sister enough to believe her. First time or not, I will not give her a second chance. She'll never hurt either of my kids again. We've actually had passwords with the vendors since day one. Some of the earlier ones were met actually recommended us to do it. Stepmother did contact our planner a while back, saying she had our approval to talk to our vendors. She didn't let her, and we got a bit more strict with passwords after that. So is stepmom serving any jail time? If she attacked a child then, and you guys pressed charges, I would imagine she would have to proceed and eventually serve some time for her crime. We hope so. We're setting up a date for the arraignment. Commenter has advice for the OP. Start a file for stepmom. Keep any and all texts, voicemails, and attempts of her communicating. Do the same with anyone who has taken her side because she could escalate and you may need that info. Those people are flying monkeys and she's sent them to not only plead her case, but report back to her the things she, you may have told them so she can continue to play her victim card. You are great to have a nanny cam, but should also make sure to notify his daycare or school that she is not to be given info or access to him. Get cameras that have audio just in case she shows up at your house and password protect all of your wedding vendors and let them know not to give her any info and to notify you if she tries. Your dad may be harmless, but she's not. The OP replies, that second advice is something we've been pretty occupied with actually. This past week has been mostly about the kids and collecting evidence, but I'll definitely check out the Just No Mother-in-Law sub. Did you say that if your father or stepmother apologize that you will allow them at your wedding? I wasn't quite sure what you were saying. The OP replies, absolutely not. My father-in-law and stepmother are not welcome at the wedding, no matter the circumstances. They could offer me an island and I'd still refuse to let them come back into our lives right now. I only plan to forgive anything far off in the future and only if they apologize sincerely. Even then, they will have no access to the kids for years after that. Knowing stepmother, I highly doubt she'll ever feel sorry for what she did, so we're not counting on it anyway. You're right to not give her a second chance. I think actions like that are inexcusable, especially when you bend the truth and don't take responsibility for their actions. Thank goodness you have the photos of Luke and the nanny cam. Hopefully, stepmom won't walk away from this unscathed. It's a shame your dad is so wrapped up in your stepmom that he can't see beyond her and do what's right. 
Does that make him just as bad or just naive and trapped? You have to protect your family, and that's exactly what you're doing. The passwords for the wedding were an excellent idea too. Hopefully these people who were uninvited know what's good for them and will avoid the event entirely. Again, so sorry that you and your family had to experience this OP. What do you make of this? What would you have done? What do you make of OP's father? Let us know in below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Lounge. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have something you want to say regarding today's content, share that with us in the comments below.